Hello, my name's Lewis, and uh, we're here today with legendary Fender Custom Shop Master Builder, John Cruz. Hey, how you doing, man? Hello. Thank you for coming and seeing us. Thank you very much. I'm uh, glad to be here. Now, how exactly did you get into uh, building guitars in the first place? You know, I, I, there was a lot of... Uh, trial and error type of things, if you will, on my own personal guitars that I owned. And uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, I messed them up quite a bit <laughs> as far as wiring and stuff, and forgetting how to put things back in and yeah, yeah. you know, putting the neck back in the pocket and I chipped the paint. And <laughs> that's when I, I asked my father to repaint my guitar for me, which he did. And uh, after he did that, I really took a lot of care putting it all back together. And, and uh, you know, they didn't have internet and stuff back then. It was just more like try to figure out where yeah. each wire went. I was able to figure that, figure that out and uh, put it back together. And that kind of piqued my curiosity into moving in a little bit forward. But it wasn't until years later that I actually moved into the actual uh, business of doing it. Um, I did work briefly in a music store uh, back in my hometown. And uh, it was basically like one of the grunt guys that's unloading the boxes, shining up a couple guitars oh, and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a fun, it was a fun gig because I was around instruments yeah. all day long, you know. And it's like, man, this is what I want to do, you know. Uh, later on, I got into the rock, rock and roll thing. Wanted to be a rock star like everybody else does, you know. Uh, and my bass player in my band got a job working for G&L Guitars over in Fullerton, which is right on the same street where the original Fender was at. Uh, we were playing together and he'd be working and he goes, dude, you got to come down here and work with us, man. This is a great place to work and they let you grow your hair long. They don't care about that. They have certain hours you can get in there and do your thing. So I went down there to try to see if I could get in and uh, fill out an application. And they weren't, uh, sadly, they weren't hiring at the time. Um, but they told me, you know, one of the secretary ladies told me that Fender down the road is looking to hire some people right now, and they're down in a city called Corona, which is a little bit away from my home, and I'm like, God, that's a long ways, but what the hell, I'll take the shot, and I drove down there, and my car almost broke down on the way there, but uh, I made it out, took the tour of the place, fell in love the second I walked through the door, um, you know, and then they offered me a job as a kind of an entry, bottom entry working in the, in the mill pretty much sweeping floors and cleaning up the machines and just helping out wherever they needed help. And uh, I didn't care, I wanted it in. So I took it and uh, that's what happened to me. <laughs> so that's how I got into it. Do you remember the very first guitar you ever made? Um, well, it actually goes you know, a few years into it and being there and uh, first assembly of guitars was probably when I was working over on the, on the other side of, not the custom shop yet, yeah. but the line where we did the production, US production stuff actually putting together a, a 62 Strat that I did and uh, you know did the neck pocket and put the neck in and uh, put the pick art assembly that I had made up yeah. and stuck it in there so that was really like the first time but uh, in the custom shop it was a different story when I got over I, I came in as a tune tester over there too so it's basically doing setups but they did a lot more stuff over there a lot more you know doing the bone nuts wiring up pick guards all that kind of stuff was all part of the job and, and I learned it pretty well. I already kind of had a good uh, head start on it, learning over on the line, production line. And uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of uh, cool builds that came across my, my bench at the time and a lot that I can remember uh, just being, you know, even back then it was hard to finish a guitar up and let it go because yeah. you knew it had to go out. But it was like, man, I would love to buy this guitar. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's so hard working in this industry to, you know, we fall in love with so many guitars every day. It's hard to let them go, you know? <laughs> what, would you, what would you say is the most technically challenging aspect um, in your job now as a master builder when you come to actually sort of building the guitar. Yeah. Is there one particular thing? That well, there is. I mean, a lot of people say it's the relicking thing and, okay. and, that, and that's, it is a challenge and it's an art form to do that yeah. kind of stuff and I enjoy doing that. But to me, it's all about the heart and soul of the whole guitar, which happens to be the neck. And okay. for me, the neck has got to feel like a million bucks, you know, from the rollover of the frets to the fret job, obviously. Uh, you know, the back shape is most important. and. Uh, I want to make it feel like a, a nicely worn pair of jeans to anybody that yeah. picks it up and not feel like a brand new guitar. You want it to feel broken in, especially when we do like aged guitars like this yeah. and stuff. There's a, it's really important for me to, to hit that mark as being something that's been used for 40 years, 50 years. I think that's something that um, people sort of take from your guitars as well, as they're always, I think uh, you were quite involved in the first sort of relics the custom shop made. Yeah, yeah, I was involved in that. I wasn't really relicking at that time, it was yeah. more about getting bodies and necks together and we put them in a crate where we shipped them off site to right. another person that did all the relicing oh, for right. us and then they would send them back and I was involved in un uncrating them and putting them in racks and stuff and then uh, I would also be involved in assembly and putting them together as well too but when the necks came to us most of those necks and bodies came over from US production side 
already done, and then we would take them and sand them even further to get more of the vintage vibe of yeah. the, you know, and everything. And even though it wasn't 100% correct, we got it as close as we could yeah. and sent those out, and that's the way they came back. So a lot of the people say those are probably the best relics ever done. Yeah. I, I choose to differ. I think the ones we do now are quite uh, astonishing They're myself. They're incredible. We, we do, we see some incredible guitars yeah. from you guys. Relic-wise, they look so accurate. Um, you look at old, uh, old Fender guitars, yeah. you know, I think it's got better, definitely, yeah, in the yeah. last few years. Even. And every year, it just, we keep growing and learning and doing new things, and uh, got to keep on my heels, because I got other guys that are coming up behind me, and they're <laughs> like, oh man, that one looks great. So, you know, I'm, I was kind of hoping to fall back a little bit, maybe do a little bit more some NOS stuff, some uh, journeyman stuff, uh, that kind of stuff, kind of take a break a little bit, because the majority of my orders are really heavy relic stuff, and it's takes out, uh, takes quite a bit of your... Do you think that's because of the Stevie Ray strap? Maybe? Yeah, that might have a little something to do with it. I think that's the one that kind of pushed me into this thing where it's like, you're never going to have a slow day again, <laughs> which I, you know, I'm honored by it because Stevie was one of my heroes as well. And, yeah. and, and they knew that I had a knack for doing copy and type guitars and stuff like that. And I think they gave me quite a few projects to do, which I took and ran with them. And I, and I think they turned out pretty well. So with um, yourself and the other master builders, you're all sort of known for, the, I would say like you're very well known for building replicas mm -hmm. with obviously the Stevie Ray Strat mm -hmm. and you did uh, John Mayers and John Mayers. Yep. and uh, you did Gary Moore very recently. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. And that's the guy who used to hang around here all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used, to, we used to come in here a lot before my time, unfortunately. Right, right. Um, but is there like a, would you say that you guys are specialized? Would you say that each one of you guys gets particular orders like this year we get maybe the more intricate you know, the crazy inlay orders, yeah. do you get more relic orders? I, I do. Um, you know, there's eight magnificent builders. They all specialize in certain things. Like the guy that works next to me is, is Dennis Galuska. He does a lot of really great jazz masters, okay. uh, you know, Mustangs for basses. He's really good with basses and stuff. So a lot of people tend to gravitate towards him when they do want a guitar like that. Um, Dale Wilson's also getting on the relic train. Thank God, he's kind of saving me a little bit. Let him do some of those. He builds a fabulous guitar. Of course, Yuri. Does a lot of uh, you know really uh, Liberace style guitars, yeah. if you will, that uh, I'd be afraid to play personally. But uh, he does a great job at that. Todd Kraus been known to build for Clapton and Beck and guys like that. He does a lot of those type of guitars. So if somebody's looking for that, you actually have the builder who built for Clapton. It's like that's pretty cool to be able yeah. to do that. So, um, um, is there a particular artist that stands out to you as one that you've worked with that you really enjoyed the collaboration with, or someone that wanted to be really closely involved? Uh, they all kind of are involved in a, in a certain sense. Uh, you know, there's some of them obviously that, that, that aren't here anymore that, uh, you know, we have to work with the family and work with their techs and stuff that, to, to rely on, on their information that they give us to build guitar for, for Stevie Ray Vaughan is, is one of them. But, uh, you know, I worked closely with John Mayer and he actually came down to the shop one time and uh, it was crazy. I was working on one of his guitars one time and he came into the shop. I guess he just came back from a holiday or out here or something. He, he was in Barcelona, I think. He was there with his girlfriend, Very nice. you know, and he comes walking in, he brought her with her, and I didn't even know who it was until they walked right in front of my bench, it was Jessica Simpson. And I was like, zoinks, so almost dropped all my tools and everything, <laughs> and she just looked as beautiful as ever, you know, and they, they both looked like hell because they just got off the plane and they literally came to Fender, but to even unmasked and un makeup up, she was gorgeous. And I just like, I'm talking to John, but I'm like staring at her the whole time, you know? <laughs> and then she had this little dog with her, and her, the dog was named Daisy, it was a little, I don't know what it was, a little tiny, I call it a rat dog or foot, furry football, <laughs> but uh, you know, she, the dog was with him. She, you know, only she could get away with bringing a dog like that into a place like ours, you know? Yeah. So she put him down and we're talking and stuff. She's got him on a leash and everything. And we're talking and stuff and I kept looking at him. So I see him walk up to one of my neck uh, cradles right there where I have a bunch of necks in. I see the dog go. <laughs> water down my uh, my neck thing for me she's oh, I'm sorry and I'm like it's all right don't worry about it so it was one of those funny moments and stuff like that but John and I worked pretty closely to get his uh, guitar together um, and then also working with um, you know uh, Donnell when we did the first runs of, of the Rory Gallagher's yeah. was was pretty special too we actually had his guitar at the shop and we got to take it apart and and all that and all the mystery and everything that, that was in that guitar is just uh, something very special to be a part of to work on so yeah there's a lot of uh, very close uh, things that we do with the with the artist if if, if it's ava if they're available or if not we work with the family and, and such to uh, to bring to life their guitars. Um, so very recently it's been announced um, that we're going to be getting some sixty one Gary Moore uh, tribute relics made by yourself. Yeah. I'm just wondering what the thought process was behind that and why you decided to to build that guitar. Uh, you know it's everybody knows now with all the interviews and stuff that that he's my hero and always has been and. Uh, 
I brought that to the attention of, uh, of marketing a while ago while he was still alive. And they didn't want to touch it because he was already affiliated with another guitar company, which we won't say. But it was heavily involved in that. And uh, so I backed off of it for a couple years or so. But uh, I kept in contact with, his, uh, with Graham Lilly, who was his guitar tech, and, and, and looking after all his stuff for him. And uh, so we kept in touch. He sent me a lot of pictures and stuff. And we just uh, stayed in touch. A couple years went by. And of course, Gary passed, and it was a really sad time. And it's like, we waited about another few months or so, and I decided, you know, and I, I'm going to bring this to the table again. And, and I really was like, really forceful about it this time. But I really believed in it, and I wanted to do it. And uh, Richard McDonald, our, 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 one of our senior vice presidents at the, at the company, you know, listened to me, which is kind of rare. They'll actually sit down, and listen, give you a couple minutes and listen to you. But they did, and uh, he could tell that the passion was there, that I really wanted to do it, and I believed in it. And uh, yeah, it sounds like fun, man. As soon as he said that, I was out the door, calling Graham, looking for pictures, doing all my research, yeah. and, and everything that I remember of the guitar, it just came back to me. And I was like, man, I can't wait to get started. So they ended up flying me out here, uh, and we got to meet with Graham over at the, uh, the Fender AR Center, which is in London. And uh, we had the guitar there, and he walked in with it and opened it up, and I was shaking when I saw it. I was just like, there it is. When I, when I first saw Gary for the first time, that was a guitar that he played. So, you know, a million things run into my mind at the time and uh, to actually have the guitar in my hands and take it completely apart and yeah. all the measurements and everything were there. Pretty simple things that we would do to any artist's guitar, but this one was real special. And, uh, you know, I even bought, brought blocks of wood with me and stuff too. And I was standing outside, if you guys remember, I was standing outside with a little rented uh, uh, air pressure thing and, and you know, I was painting blocks of wood to match the color of the paint, back and forth. It's like back and forth. Okay, cool, we got it. So I think we nailed it uh, pretty quick. Uh, you know, as far as the, the relic and stuff like that, it was really hard to uh, yeah. to nail it down exactly. And I have a process of doing that because the Stevie Ray, obviously, the Ingve Mountain, yeah, those yeah. are all very difficult guitars to do. Gary was no different. It was yeah. a it was a it was a process to do. But uh, labor of love, man. I mean, I love doing it. Uh, you know, and then we finished the prototype. Uh, we, we came out here. I actually got to, to go see Gary, pay my respects to him and stuff. I don't know if it was a sacrilegious thing or whatever, if yeah. the family would be pissed at me or not, but I actually took the guitar with me to his gravesite. I just wanted to, you know, in my mind, show it yeah. to him that, you know, this is what you've done to me. This is, yeah. I want to give it back to you, you know? So uh, that's it, man. I mean, it's yeah. just, uh, you know, taking pictures with him by it and stuff like that meant a lot to me. Yeah. And, and, you know, basically it was made for the, the fans, the true fans. Awesome. So. Well, I'd like to thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming and seeing oh, us. Oh, you're welcome. I think we've got a couple of customers that want to talk to you sure. about some builds that we've got going on. Cool. And yeah, thanks for checking it out. Awesome.